Hello everyone and welcome to Voice Acting 101. Today's episode we're going to look into what directors call vocal placement. You probably think vocal placement means that you physically have to place your voice somewhere, but actually it's a bit more complex than that. Actually vocal placement is kind of a misleading term. It is a location where you can feel good resonance and hone your voice. But you can't literally move the resonance as the term might allude to. You sense the place where you feel vibrations in your voice as you make other physical adjustments, like opening up the back of your throat. Before we go further, I should define resonance. Resonance is the art of using vibration to amplify sound. Truth is, all sound originates with some kind of vibration. For instance, the singing voice originates at the larynx where your two vocal folds flap together or vibrate to create sound. This is where resonance will come into play. The vibrating of the fold sets off sympathetic vibrations throughout your body that amplify our sound. In the voiceover world, and the singing world mind you, placement of the voice is always under fire and frankly it'll boil down to what your client or director will feel works best for the selective performance. There are some key examples of vocal placement that will aid you when you're first starting out. First off is your own signature placement, and that's your own natural voice that you use daily. And mind you, this is actually going to be your most versatile placement. It's kind of like a Sunday, you can add stuff to it, like accents, compressions, aspirations, rhythm, emotional rhythm, anything that you can think of to really just spice it up. It's an empty palette, use it to what you need to. Second is your head voice. Much like the term says, this is your top voice. It's going to be a higher pitch or even a falsetto type of voice. This is really handy for comedic pieces or really young, sprightly, cartoonish kids. Like this one. Number three is the soft pull. Imagine you're yawning and then holding in that yawn. It feels like the voice is at the back of your throat, right? If you feel it, you got it. This is the fun one to use for older characters. But remember, like I mentioned in the last lesson, do not shoot for the stereotypes with this voice. Number four is the barrel. This is a very thick and low placement with pressure building up to your chest. You hear this a lot with very muscular or stoic characters or muscular stoic characters. I'm talking about Armstrong. Look, look at him. That voice. That's that. And number five is the nasal. This is an altered version of the head voice being forced to the adenodial system, which by the way is a large mass of tissue behind the nasal cavity where your nose and throat blend. It's a very active and energetic placement. It's going to be sharp. So use it wisely on the selective performances. Because if the character's supposed to be annoying, that voice is gonna work perfectly. Yeah. Number six, and this is one of my personal favorites, the monster. This is where your vocals will get gravely from being pushed down by force. The easiest way to get comfy with this vocal style is imagining you're trying to grow a hair on the top of your head, or even holding two giant anvils in your hands. It's kind of just pushing you down so you're straining, but not overly straining or else it's gonna sound weird. Like, remember, naturalism. And number seven, the chipmunk. You know how when you suck in helium, it shrinks your voice so you sound really squeaky? You know you can mimic that voice pretty well by actually pulling in your vocal cords so they shrink and you gain that very squeaky little voice. So we'll do a quick little sound out so you hear what they sound like. Minus the signature placement because you're already hearing that one right now. The head voice. The soft pull. The barrel. The nasal. The monster. And a chipmunk. In the voiceover field, you gotta be prepared to try any voice, and with time and practice, those pipes of yours will do some amazing things. Maybe even things you couldn't have imagined doing until you actually do it. So keep up on those styles, play around with them when you're comfortable doing so, and who knows? You could create some new styles for the field to use. It's your instrument. Cherish it, and use it wisely. Thank you all for listening in. Tune in next week where we discuss something very important when getting into this. And that is etiquette. This is PM Seymour signing out.